Hey everyone, today we are diving into IAM policy inheritance in Google Cloud. How it works, why it's risky, and most importantly, I'll show you a live demo of how a user can unexpectedly gain access to resources. Let's get started. Have you ever assigned IAM permissions in GCP thinking they were limited to just one resource, only to find out later that someone had access to way more than expected? That's because IAM in GCP follows a hierarchical inheritance model which means permissions automatically flow down from higher levels. If you assign a role at a higher level, it applies to everything underneath it. Now let's talk about how GCP organizes its resources. At the very top, you have the GCP organization. Below that, you have folders, then projects, and finally at the bottom, individual resources like storage buckets, VMs, and databases. And here's the key part. IAM roles from different levels don't override each other. They add up. So a user can inherit multiple permissions from different levels, and the sum of all those permissions determines what they can actually do. So for example, if you assign a role at an org level, it applies to all folders, projects, and resources inside that org. So why does this matter from a security standpoint? The number one reason why IAM inheritance in GCP is a security concern is because it makes it far too easy for developers to accidentally assign permissions to way more resources than intended. Applying a role at a higher level automatically grants access to everything underneath it. That means a simple misconfiguration could violate the principle of least privilege, exposing sensitive resources that were never meant to be accessible. And this is where privilege explanation Escalation becomes a risk. If an attacker compromises a high-level IAM role, they instantly go and gain control over everything below it. This could lead to major security incidents. Now let's talk about another security challenge, security access auditing. First, there are four different places where a role might be assigned, org, folder, project, and resource, which makes tracking resources a real challenge. Second, if you only check IAM role assignments at one level, you might completely miss permissions from another level. For example, imagine you check an org's IAM settings and you see no role assigned to a user. So you assume that that user has no access at all in the organization. But what if they were actually granted storage admin at the project level? That means they now have full control over every single storage bucket in that project, even though at the org level, you thought they had no access at all. And this is exactly why IAM inheritance can be a hidden security risk. Okay, enough theory. Now that we understand how IAM inheritance works and why it can be risky, let's test it in real time with a live demo. I'm going to set up different IAM roles at the org, folder, project, and bucket levels, and we will see exactly how permissions flow down and accumulate, even when we don't explicitly grant access to our users. Let's jump to it. Okay, so I've logged into the GCP console and I'm going to show you the org structure that I have set up here. So at the very top, I have cloudsecuritymasterclass.com, which is our org. Within this org, we have two folders, dev and prod. And within these two folders, we have three projects, dev1 in dev, prod1 and prod2 in prod. Within these three projects, I have also created four cloud storage buckets. Within the prod1 project, I have bucket1, bucket2. Within the prod2 project, I have prod2 bucket. And within the dev project, I have one dev, dev bucket. So that's the org structure. For the first demonstration, I will be granting permissions at the resource level, which is the bucket level for this demo. And we will see how GCP works for that. So. In order to test that, I have created this user called user with bucket perm, and currently it does not have any access to any of those four buckets. To test that, I have a script which is basically just doing a gcloud storage ls on these four buckets and accordingly sending a message of access denied or access granted depending on the access levels. So I've logged into a different terminal. This is the admin account, and I'm going to use this terminal to add the policy bindings or the role to the resources, right? And in this case, the resource is the bucket, prod1, bucket1. Now, this is the same command 
uh, the add ion policy binding command that would be used at different levels but for this one we are doing it at the bucket level so this command went to success and let me switch back to my user with bucket perm and test uh, what access that uh, user now has after I've run this binding command so as you can see the the permissions were only granted to prod one bucket one which was the resource for which we created the role binding no other bucket in the project or folder or org was affected by this um, action and that's why providing permissions at the resource level is the most secure and the most restrictive type of policy binding that you can create in GCP so I'm going to show you how this looks like from the GCP console I'm in the cloud storage section and if I click on the prod one bucket one for which we created the ion binding in the permissions I can see that storage admin role has been granted to user with bucket pump as intended as we did from the command line so this is as expected but when I check at the org level right I don't see any mention of this user at all um, and similarly when I check at the project level I don't see any mention of this user there as well so this is a hidden security risk within GCP that when you do assign permissions at these lower levels they don't show up at the high levels so if you are a security auditor reviewing this um, GCP project you will have to check permissions at all the levels to confirm what access the user actually has all right let's move on to the second demonstration where we will be adding permissions at the project level so i have created a new user called user proj perm and again as confirmed by the script this user does not have any access at all so i'm going to switch to my admin uh, terminal and from there i'm going to run the add im policy binding command this time notice that this is at a project level and have provided the id of the project and um, the user for which I'm going to apply this binding so this went to success let me switch back to the, the user now and confirm what access was granted by that I am policy binding as you can see the binding that was done actually gave access to two buckets this time the prod one bucket one and prod one bucket two both of these are within the prod one project let's see how this looks like from the console so I'm in the IAM section within prod1 project and I could see the user proj perm added here with the storage admin role. This is expected because this is the same level where we created the IAM policy binding command. But what do we see at the bucket level? So in the bucket permissions, we could also see the user added here and uh, there is a small icon next to it which shows that this is inherited from the project. So when you assign permissions at a high level, they do show up at the lower level in the console. And this is also true for the other bucket, which is in the same project. So for the third demo, I am going to add permissions to the folder level now. And again, as before, I have created this user, user folder perm. And uh, currently this user does not have any permissions for any of those four uh, cloud storage buckets so I'm going to switch to the admin terminal and I'm going to create a binding command for this user now notice that this time the binding command is at the folder level this is the ID for the folder um, which is the prod folder so uh, let's run this command it went to success and I'm going to switch back and check what permissions we have provided to this user now as you can see this user now has access to three buckets those three buckets are all part of the prod folder now for the final part of the demo I am going to add uh, bindings at the organization level and I have created a user org perm just for this purpose and currently it does not have any access to either of those buckets but I'm going to create an I am binding for this user and as you can see this binding is at an organization's level this is the id for the organization and uh, this command went to success now let me switch back and confirm what access was provided to this user and as expected this user now has access to all of those four cloud buckets 
All right, now let's go to the console and take a look at how all these four bindings that we have created look like from at the four different levels in the console. So I am in the org level at the cloud security master.com level, and I can see that I only see one user here, user org perm. And if you are a security auditor, you're, and if you're only looking at the org level, you might miss out on all the permissions that might be assigned at all the other levels. So that's a hidden security risk. Now at the folder level, we see the expected user folder perm, which was assigned at the folder level. But we also see the user at the org level. And we have a column here for inheritance, which shows that this was actually created at the org level and the permission has flown down to the folder. At the project level, we can see the expected branch perm, which was created at the project level. But we can also see the folder and org users, which have flown down from folder and org levels. And again, there is a column for inheritance here, which shows you from which higher level the permissions have flown down to. Finally, from a resource standpoint or from the storage bucket standpoint, we could see all the users that were assigned at multiple levels within this GCP um, organization. And that is why if you are a security reviewer, taking a look at resource level permissions would give you the most complete picture regarding all the permissions that are assigned in your GCP infrastructure. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching this video and please keep subscribing to watch more uh, videos on cloud security.